Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, and I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. Actually, I'm doing a little more than chilling here in Cedar Rapids. I'm actually freezing my brain out. It, uh, I, I, I mentioned yesterday, the high today in Cedar Rapids was, uh, is, is two, two, two degrees. And I uh, checked the weather just now, and it is negative two. So it is negative, the possible highest temperature. Oh my gosh, it is really cold. I, um, you know, the Midwestern winters, they can be brutal. Um, I grew up in, uh, in Indiana, and uh, yeah, we had brutal winters here, but um, out in these, these flatter states, out in a little more western end of the Midwest, they just, the, the wind blowing through those fields, those flat land, it is something else. So I'm gonna be spending the day here in uh, Cedar Rapids, and uh, I've looked at you guys' suggestions on places to check out. I uh, got a few ideas. I'm uh, gonna find some stuff to do. Hopefully we can find some stuff that is maybe indoors because because <laughs> it's cold. Did I mentioned it was cold. Um, there's snow on the ground. The air is cold. The air in this car is cold. My feet are cold. <laughs> All right, enough talking about the coldness. Um, tomorrow, we will uh, be leaving Cedar Rapids. Um, the poll is uh, is out. Uh, you can vote right now. You can choose to either send me to uh, Indianapolis, St. Louis, or Kansas City. Uh, make sure you vote tomorrow morning when I get up. I will be looking at my phone and I'll be heading in the direction of whichever city has the most votes. So, but now we must focus on the great city of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And we're gonna find some interesting things to see and do. So please, follow me. Now nothing gets me warmed up like a good hot dog. So first stop today, we're gonna stop here at the Flying Weenie. This was actually recommended by uh, several viewers. You can see up there on the top, of the building, they have an airplane, so uh, literal flying weenie. Look at this, this man over here in this flight vehicle. Does anyone know what sort of a flight vehicle that is? What would you call something like that? It's got a motor on the front with wings and wheels. It's really, really cool. They're just telling me that this engine right here is actually from the plane that is on the roof of the restaurant. This arcade game here, I don't know if I've heard this, P-47, the Phantom Fighter. And then they have a flying weenie, little rocking airplane into the dining area here. Looks like they have a little, oh look at that. That is a model of the restaurant here, the flying weenie, the little airplane on the roof. We got a bunch of little airplane themed uh, trinkets. This little bear in the airplane. No bears in the air. We have a little baby flying an airplane and some baby shoes. And I love these. These are like tables that are actually have an arcade game in, like on the, the, the top of the table. We have uh, uh, controls there, under there. So yeah, you can eat on this. I remember, I think the local Pizza Hut growing up had had one of these. But yeah, once you're done eating, you just get your food out of the way so you can see the screen, and you can play. All right, let's give this a whirl. All right, you actually choose which game you're gonna play. We have Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Frogger. Let's let's do Frogger. Frogger, you're a frog and you're trying to get across the street. So there you go, doot, doot. You can't get run over by cars, because you're a frog. Jump on the turtles, jump on the log, log. Tur oh, the turtles, they went underwater, and therefore when I tried to jump on them, I drowned. Wait a minute, 
a frog drowned? That doesn't even really make sense. All right, so yesterday I got a Chicago style hot dog. Today I've got what they call a cheese gyro dog. And it's got, it's plastered with nacho cheese and it's actually got gyro meat on the hot dog. It's an interesting, interesting uh, concoction. I wanted to try something a little different. Interesting flavor there. Lots of cheese, got the gyro meat. That's a good good hot dog as well. Mm. Almost leaking down my hand. The molten cheese. Now I looked up the number one attraction here in Cedar Rapids on TripAdvisor, and this is it. The National Czech and Slovak Museum and Library. This actually has some personal interest to me as well. My last name is Kretschy, which is a Czech name. Um, my uh, great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather also had the same name as me. They're all named Jacob Kretschy. My great-great-grandfather, he was from uh, Bohemia, which is uh, now part of the Czech Republic, and uh, he immigrated to the United States. And actually, they... they um, he moved, he immigrated to Nebraska, uh, which is not far from here. I'm not that clear on uh, the connection between uh, Czech and Slovak heritage and Iowa, but that's why we should head in there. Have some uh, department store Santa and elves here, some animatronics. You often find these in uh, department store windows. It says that this set was uh, used to be in a department store window in uh, downtown Cedar Rapids. See the little animatronic movements. This guy's on the phone. This guy's hammering a toy there. And drilling holes. And saw on a board. And they got Mrs. Claus up here knitting. Looks like Santa's just checking his list. Here's a display case full of little trinkets and it says which movie or TV show will you think of and they have them labeled here in regards to uh, different movies you can see this clown here because <laughs> it reminds them of it this horse head reminds them of the Godfather it's a cross reminiscent of the exorcist that reminds them of Basic Instinct and Mrs. Doubtfire. Sculpture here is known as the Librarian. You can see the man made of books there. You can see his eyes, his little uh, beard hanging down there. That's pretty cool. Here's a traditional Czech or Slovak Christmas dinner says they have kolaches, like little cakes you get at, uh, at Bucky's. And it said they had uh, fried carp fillets, which that doesn't sound great. Here's Fate Mikolas, the uh, Czech version of Santa Claus. And it says in Czech tradition, um, the devil will show up and rattle his chains at you. And uh, if you're bad, he will either give you a lump of coal or a potato. <laughs> Which is almost, that's almost like the Krampus uh, tradition out of uh, out of Germany, but I guess in Czech, in uh, Czech and Slovak regions, it's it's not Krampus. It's just the freaking devil himself. Just imagine waking up on Christmas morning to find out that the devil brought you a potato. Now this is their um, primary exhibit, Faces of Freedom, the Czech. And Slovak journey. Oh, some people standing here. I guess these are Czech and Slovak people. Oh, what's she saying? We take turns pretending to be the captain. It's so windy up there. I'm excited to go, but I feel sad too. This interactive exhibit here asks, What would you bring? So if you 
were moving from Czechoslovakia and uh, you wanted to go to America to find new opportunity, what would you put in your suitcase? So, of course, you're going to have your bear. Uh, need that tennis racket there. Oh, man. Don't need, that's not even going to fit. That's, that's going to be an issue. Um, yeah, you got you to cook. So you got to bring your cooking equipment. Uh, you got to have a, a, a copy of uh, Superman Returns. I think that's, that's important. It's actually an outfit worn by an immigrant in 1891 when they were traveling from Bohemia to America. Oh, here is a, a ship where you would use to immigrate, but uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I trust this kind of ship. We are in the ship. Oh, okay. I have all the beds and luggage. Look at this chest here. This is an interesting fact. This is a, a random fact about, about chests. You see the rounded top? Reason that people get rounded top chests is because when they were on a boat, the rounded top chest, you couldn't put another chest on top of it because it wasn't flat. So they would tend to be put on the top while the flat topped chest would be put on the bottom. And it's not good to necessarily be on the bottom because the boats can take on water. So it's a way to ensure that your chest didn't get full of water. And look at this. We have some traditional uh, Czech and Slovak clothing on uh, on display. This like rotating platform here where the figures are rotating and show us the very bright and colorful and interesting uh, traditional outfits. What am I? These are different instruments. This is an accordion? Yes. Are those bagpipes? No, it's a it's a duty. A duty. Okay, is that a violin? Yes. Oh, I don't know what that is. This is called a Fujara. This is also a mystery to me. Let's see, uh, a Vosenbauch? A Vosenbauch. Oh man, they have some crazy instruments, don't they? A hurdy gurdy. A hurdy gurdy. Says that puppet. Is that puppetry has been a part of uh, Czech and Slovak culture for centuries. You can see the different puppets there. The wizard, the uh, princess, and the prince. It's a little stage for people to do their own puppetry. Decorating Easter eggs was a big deal. See how colorful and intricate these Easter eggs are. And there is a lamb cake mold, so you can make a cake shaped exactly like a lamb. Here we have a World War II era Czech living room. This car here is called a Tatra. It was driven by the state police uh, during the communist era, so that. Citizens would be fearful when they saw one of these driving around because they never knew if they were going to get pulled into the car for questioning. An ominous sight seeing these uh, patrol the streets. Yeah, things really sucked for the Czech and Slovak people. First, they were conquered by Nazis and then by the Soviets. So, living under two of the most brutal regimes in world history. It says that under the communists, you needed a permit to own a typewriter. So they were afraid that you would try to send uh, anti-government messages. So yeah, you had to register with the government if you owned a typewriter. That is, that is insane. That is no way to live. It says that Western goods were highly sought after, including uh, blue jeans, which you almost had to get um, through like the black market to be able to have blue jeans. And under the communists, um, religion was discouraged. It wasn't against the law to have a Bible or be religious, but it said in some professions, such as teachers, you had to uh, you had to, to publicly come out as an atheist 
in order to uh, to work. Pierre's uh, protest poster made to protest uh, the communist government. It apparently it translates to "We're indestructible, like the Smurfs." I'm standing on the front porch of the uh, Czech and Slovak Museum. You can see that big mountain there in the background. That is not a natural formation. That is Mount Trashmore. It is the giant landfill that they had here in uh, Cedar Rapids that they're turning into a uh, public park and uh, converting it. So I, I actually tried to go over there so I could, I don't know if I was gonna go to the top, but I wanted to check it out. They said it's closed for the winter. I guess it's just too cold to climb to the top of Mount Trashmore. And yes, that is the official name, Mount Trashmore. Now here, less than a mile away from the Czech and Slovak Museum, just right over the bridge, we have the African American Museum of Iowa. So here, we'll check this one out as well. Now here we have a display talking about some of the different African cultures and how varied and different they are amongst different groups in Africa. It says that this door here was built to uh, resemble the door at uh, the slave fort on Gori Island off the African coast where slaves would be uh, kept and then traded to different countries. And then as we step through there, we go into what the conditions would be like in a African slave ship. You can see the bodies crammed in there, stacked on top of one another. It says, spin the wheel. What might have happened to you if you were captured in 7080? Your chance of surviving the torturous voyage was only one in three. And then first years in slavery were no better. So let's see where that lands. It says, killed after attempting to escape work on a sugar plantation. A little display here on George Washington Carver. You can see him doing experiments there with the peanuts in the jar. Here we're talking about segregation. See the different doors for whites and for colored people and the different drinking fountains they're forced to use. You can see the white luxurious drinking fountain and a much more simple version reserved for people of color. Here we have a lunch counter that uh, during the civil rights era they would uh, do sit-ins of course, uh, black people were not allowed to sit at the counter in these restaurants. So they would come in as a group, sit there, refuse to move, but also remain nonviolent. And um, you watch some of the videos that were uh, recorded during these. The, the uh, white people would taunt them, get in their faces, hit them, be violent, and they would remain peaceful. It really did a lot to uh, to show people how awful segregation really was. Here we have a campaign podium that was used by Barack Obama here in his win in uh, the primaries in Iowa. Says that this was originally made for Hillary Clinton to use during her presidential campaign, but uh, ended up being borrowed by Obama instead during his campaign, because uh, Hillary because Hillary did not get the uh, nomination that year. It went to Obama. Here is uh, some of the campaign items from the Barack Obama presidential campaign. I'm actually going to drive over to the neighboring town of Riverside, Iowa. There's uh, something I wanted to check out there. So we've stopped off in the city of Riverside, Iowa, right here in front of City Hall. Now Riverside's claim to fame is that it is the birthplace of Captain Kirk. And notice, it does not say William Shatner. It is the birthplace of the character Captain Kirk. Captain James Kirk. You see the sign, his birthplace over here. And there it is, carved in stone, Riverside, Iowa, future birthplace of Captain Kirk. You see Captain Kirk, 
Captain James T. Kirk, he lives in the future. He doesn't live in the present. So he's going to be born here on March 22nd, 2228. There's a insignia of his ship. So we're waiting around here in Riverside, Iowa, uh, just waiting for Captain Kirk to be born. Now this is a case of reality becoming fiction and then fiction becoming reality and then reality once again becoming fiction. See, it was, it was mentioned in the original Star Trek that James Kirk was from a small town in Iowa. And the people of Riverside, Iowa said to themselves, well, why not us? Why can't we be uh, the birthplace of James Kirk? And they had it uh, declared, their town declared, we, we are the future birthplace of Captain Kirk. Now you say, well, that doesn't count. You can't just declare yourself. But it ended up counting because the, uh, the, the town was later written in to the Star Trek canon, meaning that um, it, was, it was officially recognized in the Star Trek universe that this is indeed going to be the home of Captain Kirk. So we see how the, the people of Riverside borrowed from fiction and fiction gave back. And in a remarkable piece of coincidence, March 22nd, also the birthday of uh, William Shatner. Here outside the post office, they have some Star Trek themed stamps. Riverside, where the trek begins. Stopped off here at the local park. There's another tribute to a future town hero, Captain Kirk. So check this out. We have a statue. The town has erected a statue to Captain Kirk. They've also dressed him up to keep him nice and warm. You can see the insignia there. It's, uh, I'm gonna pull the hat up just so we can get a, a look there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's Kirk, a young Captain Kirk. You can see his icy Kirk-like stare. What's he staring at? I guess he's just kind of gazing off into the. Oh no, he's there's a uh, there's a spaceship right there. I didn't notice that at first. Well, I won't make you freeze, Kirk. Let's uh, get that hat back on you there. Okay. All right, there we go. There we go. We'll cover up your ears so they get cold. Oh, there we go. There we go. Of course, if you have Kirk in the park, you got to have a, a spaceship as well. There we go. Oh my gosh. So cold. Oh, it's freezing my hands. Oh. Love these merry-go-round style rides. You don't see them too much because they're not the safest, but they're super fun. Remind me of my childhood. Oh my gosh, I think this one literally is frozen in place, I think. Oh, I gotta move just a little bit. But yeah, that's frozen. This park also has a jail cell in it. Look, look in here, all the bunks have been broken. Yeah, if you locked someone in this jail, that would be cruel and unusual punishment, given the temperature. Oh my gosh. So across the street from the park with Captain Kirk, we have this. This is the USS Riverside, I guess this is the town's version of the Enterprise. So it says they have a annual Trek Fest, the official future birthplace of Captain Kirk. So they have a festival every year. Let's see over here. Okay, so yeah, the last Saturday in June, they have the festival. Man, I, I, I wish it was June right now. Yeah, I wonder if this thing, I wonder if they can actually get it up into the air. That'd be pretty cool. You can see they have a quilt square there with the Enterprise on it. 
and uh, here they actually have the Riverside History Center, the Voyage Home. It's got the uh, Enterprise on the signs. Yeah, future birthplace of Captain Kirk. Unfortunately, museum will be closed for the month of January for inventory. I've noticed this as I've been trying to find places to go. A lot of the museums close down for January around here for some reason. I don't know. It, it seems like you want the museums open because there's something to do inside. We can still peek through the window there. And look at that. What is that thing? Is that some sort of alien? It's like a giant bird monster? If anyone knows what that is, leave a comment in the comment section. Yeah, they are really into uh, Star Trek here. You can see he says, I want you for Star Fleet. Wow. Just wanted to mention, it's cold. It's cold. No, no, no. I wanted to mention um, Star Trek. I admit I have not seen a lot of Star Trek, but my whole life I've been surrounded by people that love it. I've had friends of my childhood were always telling me how, I remember growing up, people, my friends all watched Star Trek The Next Generation. They told me I should watch it, and I just never really did. And um, I've had other friends tell me that the original series, the original series is where it's at. Um, See, so yeah, I've seen one full episode of the original series recently. I watched the Gorn episode, which is absolutely amazing. And I'd love to I'd love to watch some more episodes. Uh, I just don't know where to start. There's a lot of a lot of episodes to choose from. Um, I don't know because here's the thing that that like kind of makes me cautious about watching it is that like. The idea is that it's like a utopia, and it doesn't, I don't know, I, I always wonder like where conflict comes from in a utopian setting. I remember um, my friends telling me in uh, Star Trek Next Generation that they had replicators so they could just replicate a machine that could give them any food, anything they wanted. And that just seemed like, I don't know, it seemed like a low stakes adventure show. You know, if you have everything you want at your fingertips, like, where's the conflict? And I'm sure some of you are screaming, screaming at me right now because, because I know a lot of people love this show. It would, it would be, maybe do me a favor, give me, give me um, in the comment section, just leave maybe a few episodes that I should check out. Some episodes that really show off, um, you know, the show and and, and what it's capable of. Because I know. I know nothing becomes this uh, this famous and this big without uh, without there being some reason behind it. Obviously, there's a reason people love this show. There's a reason people dedicate themselves to the show. Yeah, that's a, the, the Trekkies. That was almost like the first real like like nerd fandom. Um, you know, now it seems like there's there's, a fa there's fandoms everywhere, but that seems like that was like the first real like community fandom was was the Trekkies. That's US I-80 right there. And we have stopped off at a rest stop here. It was a very interesting rest stop. It's actually a literature-themed rest stop. You can see the, uh, the pen here, the fountain pen, the uh, type. These are like types, little type sets. Spell out Iowa. And it says Iowa in fancy cursive writing on the building as well. You can see the theming continues inside. You have the different fonts here, the women's restroom, and the different M fonts, the men's restroom. And for some reason here above the vending machines, they have some uh, Pac-Man theming. It says, don't let the sleepies get you. Drowsy driving could mean game over. So, oh yeah, so it tells you don't fall asleep while you're driving. Get something out of these machines. Get some coffee. Chug a monster energy drink. Or some good old fashioned Mountain Dew or Pepsi. So you have the giant trash can here. It's shaped like a Pac-Man board. I guess instead of Pac-Man you have a little car. And uh, they have dots and you can collect zero fatalities. That's, that's good to have. I guess these ghosts will make you fall asleep 
and uh, crash your car. Let's check the other side of the highway. <laughs> Yeah, it appears that there is another uh, literary rest area on the opposite side of the highway. I figure we'll just take a peek at that one as well. So yeah, there is a separate literary themed rest area on the opposite side of the interstate. And this one actually, the theming is different though. See, it has these stacks of books and these pillars out in front are books. There's the Iowa State University, the history of Iowa right there. I do appreciate the themed uh, rest areas here, you know, when uh, when I gotta pull over on, uh, off the highway under the rest stops, because I gotta pee, you know, I appreciate a little whimsy. stopped off in the small town of Robbins, Iowa, which is uh, right outside of Cedar Rapids. And we stopped at Lebowski's Bar and Grill. This is a uh, restaurant founded by a person who is a huge fan of the Big Lebowski movies so much that he made a restaurant themed around the Big Lebowski. Check this out in the entranceway. We have the dude's rug that uh, compelled the entire story. Juicer. So they have some Lebowski themed items, the Lebowski picture there, as well as some t-shirts. Over here on the booths, you can see cast of characters from the big Lebowski. Now people were telling me that when you're in Iowa, you gotta have pork tenderloin. And, uh, this one, you can, add, you can add different cheeses, you can add Bacon, ham, eggs, and onion rings to it. That seems a bit intense, but we're, we're gonna try that, I think. And here we have it, the uh, pork tenderloin. You can see a giant tenderloin there. It's twice the size of the bun. All right, we got the, look at that. That is literally as big as my skull. But here we go, good bite here. Mmm, mmm. It's really tasty, really tender, and tasty, and crunchy. Mm. Thumbs up. So thank you for joining me today on our somewhat icy trip through the Cedar Rapids, Iowa area. Uh, tomorrow I will be getting up, I will be looking at my phone, and I will be going to whichever location you guys feel that I should be going to. So that's gonna be either Indianapolis, St. Louis, or Kansas City. So um, in the meantime, if you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also have enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that is in the description. It helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, this one's in the bag.